Hey guys, it's Mr. Hale here coming at you again from my garage of scientific wonders and other mysteries. Got my daughter Ryan here with me today. She's going to help me out with a couple of demonstrations that I like to do in my classroom over the years. And it's a nice rainy day right now. So. Wait, Daddy. What's that, Ryan? It's raining. It is raining. Where's the rain coming from? The clouds. Right. And where do, we, where do the clouds come from? Isn't it part of the water cycle? It is part of the water cycle, Ryan. That's amazing. So that's actually what we're going to talk about today. Um, a little bit of the water cycle and how that relates to how clouds are formed. And we're going to make a cloud in a bottle. It's a pretty simple and easy demonstration to do at home. And like all of my demonstrations that I like to share with you, they're really simple things with common household uh, products that almost everybody has or could get very easily things that would end up in the recycle bin usually. I uh, hope you guys try this out, but as always, and I mean this always, 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 always have parental permission and adult supervision when trying these at home. And adult supervision doesn't mean your brother who's in eighth grade. That means a grown up to help, okay? I wanna make sure that we're very clear on that. Um, so this week we've been uh, talking about, well, today uh, in your e-learning, you should have uh, seen that we had a, a lesson on clouds today. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Mrs. Held for that awesome uh, work she put together for that. The uh, weeks before we've had um, a lot of stuff on air pressure as well as the water cycle. So those are two concepts, while they may not necessarily seem like they go together, actually have a huge, huge correlation as far as mm -hmm. how clouds are created. All right, so first thing is in the water cycle. Let's review that real quick. Water cycle, evaporation, condensation, precipitation. Evaporation, that's when electromagnetic uh, energy or radiation from the sun hits the standing water at places like, oh, let's see, oceans, lakes, streams, rivers, etc. And that surface, some of that surface water gets turned into a gas called water vapor. Water vapor is, uh, you know, it's a gas, quite simple as that. And it, it rises up into the atmosphere and that's when condensation starts to take place, right? Condensation, what's that? Well, that's easy. That's when water vapor turns back into a liquid. Great example of that. And this is something that I think a lot of you uh, can probably relate to. And I know I can, uh, even still today. Mm -hmm. uh, think of this, it's summertime, it's hot, you've been outside playing baseball or riding your bike or doing whatever. You're hot and sweaty, you come inside, you uh, get a nice cold uh, ice-filled glass of water, tea, soda, et cetera. And you come in, you flop down on the couch, you set your cup down on the coffee table, and then your mom comes in and loses her mind, right? She goes crazy. She's mad because you didn't use a coaster. Why do you need the coaster? Well, because if you don't, the condensation that's on the outside of your glass is going to trickle down. It's going to leave a, a, a moisture ring on, on your nice wooden table. But how did that water get there? Did it come from inside the glass? No, the glass isn't leaking. What happened is, is your glass, because of the icy cold drink inside of it, cooled the cup down. And as the cup cools down, the glass itself cools down, water vapor that's in the air comes in contact with it and condenses. It turns back into a liquid. Then it trickles down the side. You get the, the water ring and oh boy. So what on earth does that have to do with the cloud, Mr. Hale? I know. Do you, you, you do? Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. What, what? No, okay, I'm kidding. I do know what happens. All right, so that water vapor goes up in the air. Now, as we learned about the atmosphere, the higher we go in the atmosphere, the cooler it gets. The reason is, is our air particles closer to the surface, about that 15 PSI at sea level that Ryan and I talked about the other day with our yes. vacuum jar demonstration becomes less, you go up and up and up because the particles in the air spread out. There's less energy in the atmosphere, therefore it's, it's not, as, not as warm. So as that water vapor rises, 
the air cools off and so does the water vapor. And as it cools off, it finds little bitty particles known as condensation nuclei. Some people just call them cloud seeds. And in fact, that's kind of a process they use cloud seeding to help try to make it rain in drought stricken areas. But anyway, they're tiny little particles of like dust, ash, carbon, various different pollen, different things that are in the air that that water vapor, when it comes in contact with, because it's cooling off, turns back into a liquid. And it turns into a tiny, tiny little droplet of liquid water or an ice crystal. And as that continues, they grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And as they grow larger, guess what? A visible cloud starts to form. Wow. Okay, so then why does it rain? Well, what happens is, is those, those particles become bigger and so much bigger that they can't stay suspended in the atmosphere any longer and gravity wins, pulls them back to Earth. Then we have our precipitation. The whole water cycle process starts all over again. Okay, so moving on from that, we're going to jump in now to our demonstration. We um, have that in the, the book that says it. You, yeah, you learned that in, in science, too. I remember when you guys were talking about it. It's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, but I do have it in the book that got me. You do? Yeah. Right. Now, so right here I have a, a simple, empty, uh, two liter, clear two-liter bottle that I saved from so well, it's got a little bit of warm water in it about halfway filled with warm water and nice. what I'm gonna have That's Ryan awesome. do here is I'm gonna have Ryan give, give that a good shake and the reason she's shaking that is very simple we want to put as much water vapor into the air in that bottle as we can right let me borrow this for a second like I forgot to mention if you look at the bottle here you can see that what about the safety algorithm? okay we'll get we'll get there okay you can see where the water is there and then everything above it. Well, that's air. That's just regular air. Nothing, nothing fancy in there. I'll open that up to show you nothing, nothing fancy in there. Just, just good old fashioned air. I'm going to screw my lid back on. I'm going to have Ryan give this a good shaky shake here. Okay. Shake shake. All right, Ryan, give it a good one, shake. Another shaky shake. All right. Now, Ryan, you're going to put on your safety glasses for these next yep. couple steps. Okay. All right. That, I think that's good. That's a good shake. And now, right now, I want you to see real quick. I can put my hand behind it. You can see it pretty clearly. And I'm going to put this behind it as well. Ryan, can you uh, move your arm, please? Ryan, thank you. I put on your safety glasses. All right. Now, I will put this backdrop back here so you can see. And you can see my hand behind it. All right. Okay. That's good, Ryan. Thank you. So, I'm going to put my safety glasses on as well. Now, this is the way that I was shown years and years ago to make a cloud in a bottle. And I've even done it in my own classes a few times. And I've just always been disappointed with it. Um, the thing is, is that it, uh, it just, it works, but just not really that great. So I'm going to go yes. ahead for what I'm going to need. So this, this matches. So if you're going to do this, you need to have a grown up do this for you. I mean it. I'm not getting around. Grown up, please. All right. So I'm going to, Unscrew the lid here. That's a bad angle here. I'm going to unscrew my lid. I'm going to give this a light my matches. I'm going to let them all catch oh on fire. That's high. Then I'm going to blow them out, put them in the bottle. I want to seal that as quickly as I can because I want to keep all that yeah. those particles in there. Now, I already see some smoke. Now, what I've done is I added smoke to it. Why do I add smoke? Well, that provides us our condensation nuclei, yes. those tiny little particles for the condensation to form on. All right, so now if I look at this, you can see, I can. Look, look at this. All right, go ahead and slide your hand behind there, Ryan. It's not can you as reach? clear as it was before. Right. But and how do I know that was at the smoke? How the do, bottom it is, it is. not at the top. It, it is. Now, how do I know, though, that that wasn't just the smoke? Well, some of it's the smoke, yeah. but not completely. Now, watch this. I'm going to squeeze this. As I squeeze it, what happens is, is look, now you can see my hand behind it it's again, where you couldn't before. What happens when I squeeze it, I increase air pressure. Yeah. When I, when I increase air pressure, the temperature goes up slightly, mm -hmm. and that makes it harder for the water to condense into those tiny little droplets to create the crap cloud. Now, as you can see, that was not a terribly exciting demonstration. In fact, it's rather un underwhelming pretty boring so ryan what do you think do you think we can come up with a way to add... i have a good idea okay what, what what's your idea ryan well I, we're, I don't know what she's doing i'm, I'm a little scared 
Ooh. Ooh. A bike pump. A bike pump. What a good idea. All right, so a bike pump. What we're going to do here is we are going to add pressure to it. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan handed me a needle inflator. This is like one of those deals that you uh, use to air up a soccer ball or a uh, football, basketball, whatever kind of inflated athletic ball you use, rubber, kickball, whatever. And I also have a, a cork. I've got another one. I've got a whole one, just a, a regular cork that I have trimmed down so that my needle valve is longer than the cork. And then I drilled a little hole in it so I can push the needle valve through just yeah. like this. If you can see, it's kind of hard to see on camera. I'll hold it up there. All right, so that's what we have. It's going to go in there. It is. It's going to go into the opening of my uh, my two-liter bottle. Now, what we're going to do here in just a second is I'm going to just slide that in there just a little bit. I don't want to make it too hard to come out yeah. because now, here's the thing, guys. We're gonna push. You ever use a spray can? like a, an aerosol spray can or something, you notice as you're using it, it gets cooler. One of the reasons that is, is that as get, as air pressure, the pressure inside that can is pretty great. And as, as air, air pressure goes down really, really rapidly, air pressure, air pressure, Ryan, thank you. Air pressure, when it decreases really, really rapidly, guess what? It cools off. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a whole bunch of pressure to this a whole bunch. with our bike pump. How much should I do? I want to say give it about three good pumps. Ryan's going to try to give it three good pumps. It's kind of hard. hard to, let me stand up. Yeah, go ahead. She's going to um, <clears throat> give it about three good pumps. Now, this is why I'm wearing safety glasses. Now, I know this bottle is probably not going to burst, but just in case, safety first. All right, that's a good pump. All right, good. All right. Give it another good pump. Oh, uh, that looks like it's getting a little difficult for you, Ryan. Let me go ahead and do that for you. Okay. All right. Let me give it two more good pumps. Now yeah, one I more good pump should pump. do it. And oh. all right, now look at that. It, that is. See, it's a cloud. Yeah, you can actually see. Let me hold this up here. You can actually see some of it. Let me look at that. You see that? That is just water vapor coming right out of there. Isn't that cool? You want to give that a squeeze, Ryan? Yeah. Give it a squeeze. All right. All right. Cool. It's All like right. smoke now, coming out of a chimney. It kind of is right now. Let's put this back in here. First of all, I'm going to put my lid back on. I'm going to try this again. We, I, I think we will because I want to show them how the pressure affects it. So watch okay. this. So it's nice and clean in there. I'm going to recap this and I'm going to give it a couple of quick pumps here real quick. Okay. Let me move that a little bit closer so that the students can see it. Watch out, Ryan. That's good. Okay. One. Whoa! Two, I can see it fogging up. Three. Whoa! And there it goes. Told you. See that? That one? scares me. Yeah, I know. That we knew that was going to happen. But it's coming yeah. out now. Now look at that. And, and it, it looks more like a cloud this time because I see like right. the um the the, the, the water vapor. The water vapor. Right now, you know what though? I don't want to look at that cloud anymore. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to add air pressure back to it. Watch what happens when I put more pressure in it. Back? Because I want to show you what happens here when I add air pressure back oh, to it. Guess what? The match went down. The cloud starts to go away. The reason that is is down. because water water vapor has a really hard time condensing yeah. when the air pressure is too high. Mm -hmm. But when the pressure is much lower like this. Guess what? Now there we go again. Whoa. We have now another. Now it looks again like a cloud. Another Ouchie. cloud. Isn't that great? All righty. So I right, have a seat, Ryan. Um, have a seat. Thank you, dear. It's awesome. That is pretty cool, isn't it? So what we did there was the neat thing about this one, the first one you have to use a match and all that. You know, I don't like that because it's well, playing with matches, first of all. The other reason I'm not in love with that is because it just doesn't do a good a job as does the uh, the bicycle pump and air pressure. So that's pretty cool. And I've got a really nice cloud trapped in this bottle here. And I think that's a real simple demonstration with just basic things that we have sitting around the house. Guys, as always... Be safe. Well, thank you. Be safe. Have fun. Be inventive and creative. Try to make some stuff. Try things. I'd love to see I you guys it. try this out. 
I'd love to see, uh, you know, you send me some pics or some emails me? with the things that you guys are doing at home during the yeah. shelter in place. Uh, the last video we put up a sediment tube and uh, I asked you guys to maybe try one of those. Hopefully some of you guys have that. Uh, I'd love to see the pics and emails of that. Also send me uh, emails or comments in the YouTube channel about other activities and demonstrations you might like to see. I'm going to try to keep the videos I'm making right now related to the content we're covering, but I'm also wanting to do just some, some fun kind of uh, engineering STEM type things to share with you as well. Guys, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you, uh, no, we're not going to do that. But, uh, make sure you are checking in with your uh, e-learning and Google Classroom every day. Miss you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. This is Mr. Bye. Hale out. Bye.